<laughs> so guys, welcome back to another episode of Don't Take Paracetamol for Someone Else's Headache. At all, though. At all. Make, make, make a speaker for PG. Make you no go drink paracetamol for <laughs> You know Ja, if you know Ja, you need to learn some Nigerian slangs. So I'm back with the main man himself, Jerry. And yeah, let's start off with yesterday's event. How are we feeling? Ah, don't even go there. I'm dying. <laughs> don't even want to even talk about that because it was a disaster. Mm. After me running on the street of Outlaw naked without shirts. <laughs> and I, I, I was humbled. But anyways, it is what it is. Yeah. It is sport. It is football. Well, just, just, just on a quick one there. It's just so fascinating that amount of people... I'm not gonna say that I hate Nigeria. I'm not gonna say hate Nigeria, but yeah, it's jealousy. The, like it's jealousy. Like it's jealousy. if someone goes, it was basically fifty-three countries against one. Yeah, we lost against the entire Africa. We didn't lose against. Yeah, well, I, I don't Nigeria, get it. Nigeria, we lost against the entire Africa as a continent because they don't understand that the banter we throw on the ni- net mm. is just banter. Yeah, we just catch crews with it. We don't. There's nothing malicious about it. That's very but true. But some other countries, they think, oh, Nigerians are arrogant, Nigerians are this, Nigeria. No, we are not arrogant. We are just trying to have a bit of crack, you know, a bit of laugh or crack, just like the Irish people say it. You know? We just train banters. It's all fun. We even throw banters, throw sh- shade on ourselves. We tell ourselves, oh, we know our government is corrupt. We know our country, there's no light. Very true. We, before we banter you, we throw shade on ourselves. Right? That's so right. We know we have bad economy. Yeah. We know our government is bad, so your banter doesn't even have a pinch of salt mm. on us. So it's one love to all African countries, you know. It's one love. It's all love. It's still one love. So let's get straight into it. So obviously, I was talking to you about a video I saw on YouTube there about a week or two ago. I actually love their content. They do a lot of interesting things. But one thing that really struck me was they done an episode with um, Gen Z and the older. The older group. The older generations, yeah. And basically, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, what was interesting was seeing two different minds talk. One person says something specific, and this is where we're going to start. He said, respect is a right. You need to respect an elder. It is the right. What do you think about that statement? That's, that for me, I totally, 100% disagree with that statement okay because i feel respect is end yes but what do you mean respect is your right yeah what do you mean so because i should respect because you are older than me then you can talk to me the fuck the way you like and mm. you expect me to just keep my ass bowed down to you yeah it doesn't work that's the problem with the older generation it doesn't work that way that's very true you know you can't you can't just say Oh, because I'm older than you, you have to respect me. No, respect is a give and take thing. If you respect me as an elder, I will respect you too as a younger person. Hundred mm-hmm. percent, I agree. It's a give and take thing. It's not. It's not a birthright. Yeah, because I when I was listening, I was just listening. I was like, do you guys like? I'm like, do you guys listen? Are you guys listening to yourself? But that's the problem. Like, you don't listen to yourself. You're telling me that I should respect you. you. See, that's entitlement. And someone specifically said. So, basically speaking, no. Someone gave an example. What did the guy say again? He said something on the lines of, "Um, if there was a governor in Nigeria somewhere that yeah. was robbing money, he said, should I go and respect that person?" And they all said, "Yes." And I was like, you see, "So you're telling me I should respect see. someone doing the wrong thing?" You see. Okay. Like, now a simple question mm. that the young lad should mm. have asked them was that, as my father. Or as an elderly person, and you say, "Oh, we are starving at home. Can you please go and rob a bank?" So I should respect you yeah. and go and rob a bank. You see, it doesn't work that way. Why do? You, work that way. But like, I think I, I don't get the respect. Like, I understand, you know, it's respect is a cultural thing for us. Yeah. I don't even think like because even to the state that we have to call people uncle and auntie. Yeah. You know, it's it kind of is like. Why am I calling you something I meant to call my family member when you're not even my family member? Yeah, that's that's true. I never I never got it like But I, but funny enough, for me that's not an issue. Yeah. 
for me that is not an issue. Oh, it's not an issue. I yeah. just never understood if, if, it. If, if 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 someone is way older than you mm. and the person is doing something right, you know? Okay. I might see someone that is older than me mm-hmm. and I don't know you from Adams and I want to address you. What? How can I address you, you know? So it's easy for us back home to say auntie or uncle. Yeah. You know? And in short, in another short form we use back home in Nigeria, we say bros. Okay. If I see someone older than me or someone sees me. Yeah. You know? The person say bros, Jerry. Bros. That is a sign of risk, respect. Mm. To me you understand well, so it's it's something that you don't know the person by the name you mm-hmm. want to show some respect mm-hmm. you know so that's but do you think if you were nine like yourself personally do you yeah. think if you were still in nigeria would you expect that respect from someone else or would you be with find someone just going oh jerry or i'll give you an example okay me and my nephew yeah i'm older than him with over 20 years yeah. You know him, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. We're in the class doing masters together. And he's calling me Uncle Jerry. And everybody was like, Why the fuck are you calling me? Uncle? <laughs> you know? But because of me, I grow with the time. Yeah. I develop, I grow with the development, with the way things grow. Mm-hmm. I grow with it. I'm not stuck in the past. I'm not stuck 100%. in my old days. So I told him, I said, you calling me Uncle Jerry. You're making me feel too old. Stop calling me Uncle Jerry. Do you know what? Call me by my nickname, J. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Call me, so, I don't agree that kind of, uh, call me J. But if I tell him to call me Jerry, because of our culture, he cannot, it, it, it will be too heavy for his mouth. Yeah. Even like, even like, yeah. I have the same issue in work. Yeah. I have an auntie who, She's a lovely woman. But I have to call her by her first name because when I'm in work and I say something like that, it's like, what are you, why are you calling her? Do you know, why are you doing yeah, that? Like, yeah. this and that. And I, and the thing is like, it's hard. It took it's, me like three months to start saying yeah, her name properly. It's hard. It's so hard. And it's just yeah. like, my. And do you know, sorry, sorry to cut you short. And no, do you know, no, if no. your parents are there, and they know that person is older than you. They will scold you for calling her by her name. Yeah. But luckily, my own mother, I explained to her and she yeah. goes, yeah, I understand when you're in work settings. Yeah, I understand yeah. that you're in work. But yeah, like, yeah. but don't do it outside. Just, just don't, be doing it outside. don't be doing it outside. But then yeah. what's so hard is as well now is that because I'm so, so used, used to calling, calling her by her, her first yeah. name that yeah. I'm told that like, <laughs> so that's I'm what my stuttering. So that's what my nephew calls me. He calls yeah. me Jay. Okay, that's... He calls me Jay. Yeah. Because... See, my my little nephew and nieces, 10, 15, 20 years, mm. 13 years old, they call me Baba J. <laughs> That's a nice nickname. <laughs> they say, ah, Baba J, ah, or they call me Uncle Pakistan. Wait, what? Do you know why they call, why, Uncle, why Pakistan? They call you Uncle Pakistan? I don't know how to cook. I've never cooked in my life while I was in Nigeria. I was the baby of the family. Okay. Everything was done for me. So... <laughs> When I go to visit this, my nephew yeah. and nieces, when their parents tell, you know, we're going to eat eba. Oh, we don't want to eat eba. I say, okay, don't worry. I have to prepare a food that I learned how to prepare while I was in Pakistan. So just just, <laughs> a, joke. Know, just yeah, a yeah, banter yeah. to make them laugh. They say, Pakistan, oh yeah. How do you make it? I say, come. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I just brought bread. <laughs> Throw it on the fry pan. <laughs> broke an egg. Put it on top of the bread, fry it, turn it upside down, and gave them and said, This food is from Pakistan. It's what the Pakistani <laughs> president is eating. And when they ate it, oh, it's so good. They said, I call me Uncle mm, Pakistan. Pakistan. Uh, I get you. You know? Yeah. So, you see, the, w- the, the old generation needs to be a little bit loose. Mm. If you look at that debate, I wouldn't call them arrogant, mm. but I feel they are so stiff. Yeah, they do not want to learn. Yeah, they do not want to grow with what's happening. That's they do not want true. to involve themselves with what the world has gone past nineteen twenty four. Yeah, hundred percent. Things yeah. have changed, so you have to grow. Let me tell you something that they are missing. What they are missing is that they feel the youth, the young ones, has nothing to offer them. Yeah, but I will. I I always say it. I say. 
it's kind of intertwined. Mm. There's no way the older generation can do without the younger generation. That's very true. Same way the younger generation cannot do with the older generation based on some context. Let me give you an example. Those Someone of 80 years old, if you see a fishing link, will you be able to know the differences between a real or a genuine link to a fishing link? Will an 80-year-old man be able to differentiate it? Probably not. <laughs> no. But a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old can tell you that's not a real link. That's a fishing link. If you look at the the address, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not properly, it, you know? <laughs> even my mom always happens because, you know, these, these scammers are getting smart and smart. Yeah. Everything. They'll start sending their messages you like, know? you haven't paid your bill. That you know, stuff like that. that. I'm like, mom. These people fully say they will not text or call you or hear yeah. anything. The, <laughs> no, okay, you know, no. so these are the things that you need, you need, you still need this okay, new you, generation you people do. to, to tell you that this thing that you want to click into, it will take someone directly to your your system mm. and the person can start siphoning money from your, 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 your bank account. True. How so, many 80 year old, how many 70 year old person is familiar with that? It's happened to my mom before. Thank God, like, I got involved straight away. But it's happened to my mom before. So, so, so we need each other in different concepts. That's 100% true. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. So, um, what was very interesting as well, they did that. Uh, they asked about. So, what was another thing they said? They said, is the older generation the cause of all the current problems in Africa? All the what? All the current problems in Africa. Yeah, you see, it's a 50-50 for me mm. when it comes to that because when it comes to respect, the old generation, oh, you see, one problem with our the old generation, ah, it's okay, leave it alone. Ah, it's, 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 we're fine. We use that dirty word. Ah, God day. God is not going to jump down from, I'm a Christian. God, God will never, ever come down and help you. The Bible says, God will bless the work of your hand. Mm. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. That means you have to do something, then God will now bless yes. it. Yeah, but if we keep on saying, oh, it is well, it is well. That's why you see the old generation, they love going to church more than this new generation. Because the new generation don't care about those scamming pastors yeah you know that use the bible to scam innocent people of their hard earned money the bible says god chooses who to bless and it has been the grace of god it will never be the grace of a human being mm. and if you look at grace god gives grace to anybody he wants not by you paying 10 percent title i'm not saying i'm not talking about i'm not going against those if you want to pay i wish you the best of luck if you don't want to pay i wish you the best of luck but it doesn't work that way you cannot bribe god so but this old generation that's their way hmm. it is this way or no okay. way what happens to the world compromise yeah what happens to the world learning Yeah, no, I, I hear you there. So, 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 for me, the, the two generations, all the generations, not just the Gen Zs, this include the millennial generation, yeah. the baby boom generation, we all need, it, it, we have to listen, compromise with one another. No, oh, yeah. You know? I, get, I hear you uh, there. So that's just it. I hear you there. Yeah. Um, it was interesting because I learned a lot from that a lot from what they were saying and what the younger generation were coming about saying is that back in your day you had free school free education you had a lot of free things but it's ever since you came into power and you got money hungry is when all these problems started happening that all the money that was meant to be used to make nigeria better is what they've used to put in the back of their own pockets and then um i was like yeah it does make sense they say well, let, let, let's 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 go to nigeria let's use nigeria as a case study yeah. who are the ones who are the ones in government now all the older generation and what is happening to the country did you see how much to 
the president of Nigeria, Tinobu's daughter, they spent on her 50th birthday. No. 30 million dollars. 30 million dollars. Research it. She was carried million with, by men as if she's a princess from, from, from Wait, Egypt. You say 30 million dollars. You have a phone there. You have internet now. Check how much was spent. Aisha Tunubu. Different places are saying different things. Just check. How much are they saying? One is saying um these people they can never say one saying seventy one million dollars, one saying one point five million dollars. Uh, some saying seventy five, some saying one point five. Okay, <laughs> calm down. Let's use an average. So that the let's just go with the average. Yeah. Some say seventy five. Mm. Some say one point five million. Okay. Let's just say twenty million. Okay. That is crazy. Do you know what Nigerians are going through right now, back home? Especially with the um. <laughs> if you know what Nigerians is going, fuel price now in Nigeria is about six fifty per liter. Is that a lot? I don't. I can actually wouldn't know. Can't yeah, you wouldn't know, but that's Ill. okay. How much? How much? Check how much is the basic salary of a government 000. worker. Thirty thousand. Oh Jesus! I can't. And you I say get one liter of oil. <laughs> well, how okay. much was one liter before, though? So so one. It's about two hundred and something. Oh Jesus! Yeah, now I get you. Okay, now if I'm going to put fifty liters on my in my car, how much would that be? Could be a lot. We're talking like. A lot, a lot. <laughs> like, just I just want to be. Sh I want you to do it on my. Check it there. Just at least say, let's say six six fifty, so six fifty times times ten. thirty liters. Let's just see. Okay, six fifty times ten. thirty. Say I want to put thirty liters in my car. Six fifty. I'm coming. I'll get it here. Times thirty, nineteen thousand five hundred. Nineteen thousand. That's you are putting thirty liters. Nineteen thousand five hundred. That is over half of your salary. Mm. How long is that going to take you? With the hold up in Nigeria Road. Not very fair. I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Not very fair. And someone is somewhere spending t millions on the birthday party. So now let's come to what so that we don't deviate. Whose generation now is destroying the economy of Nigeria? The older. Then now someone now come and tell me you have to respect the older generation. Yeah. Fuck fuck them. Jeez, yeah. People that doesn't give a fuck about me. Mm. So do you, let's uh, let's just put it in this perspective. Do you what do you because you know this this is an uh, this is an angle that goes on for a very, very very long it's an argument that goes on for a long time who do you think what do you think who do you think needs to be in power do you think it's a younger person or an older person or what do you actually think needs to change to stop these problems we need change hmm. we didn't you see we need to, okay the older generation have been ruling since 1960 right yeah See now, right? Mm. And we've not seen any improvement, right? Things are going bad. Okay, let's try change. Mm -hmm. And when we mean change, we are talking about the youth, the young people. We are not talking about those bloodline of still those people. People, yeah, no, hundred percent. Don't tell me that the governor of uh, one state, the son, mm -hmm. no, because him too has been benefiting from criminality. Him too has been enjoying criminal enterprise that have been brought down to him mm. from his parents from yeah, his or her parents so we don't want that yeah and i feel like that's why they lose i feel like that's why they're losing a lot of respect for the, the yeah, yeah, yes yes I mean, of course no. I think that's why they are and i don't think they realize it it's not 
it because they don't care mm. because there are some idiots that are so hungry true that we still go and beg them mm. for peanuts that can barely last them for two days mm. that's true instead of you to fight for something that will last you and your generations mm. you are begging for something that will last you for just two days that's true and after the after the two thousand naira they give to you, after the two cups or two derica of rice they give to you, that you can cook on one go, finishes. Yeah. What next? Yeah. That's true. What next? That's true. You see, they say the young ones they are criminals. Ah, uh, the the new generations are uh, the lot of criminals. Mm. Let me ask you, the new generations, the Gen Z Gen Z generations. They are, they are filled with a lot of energy. Mm. Where did they learn the criminality from? You I'm coming. Cr- that's what I want to tell yeah. you where the criminality. And when you have a lot of energy and you are, you know, you are in a bubble mm. and there's energy boiling and there's no positive place to channel your energy to, yeah. what do you think will happen? You burst and channel it to the wrong into the wrong, the negative the place. Country. That's very true. When a young person in Nigeria has been looking for a job here and there. A graduate, a first class honors graduate looking for a job and there's no job. Mm. The job has been kept for their unborn children. Yeah. So what do you think will happen? They're going to go do something they don't want to do. <laughs> because want. we Nigerians, we are so energetic. We are so emotional. We are so passionate. Anything we want to do, we do it well. Oh, yeah. So if you give a young guy <clears throat> the opportunity, you will see. He will grab it, not just with his both hands or with her both hands. She will even grab with her legs. Mm. That's why we'll still come back to that word and say other African countries are angry, are jealous about Nigeria. Mm. They think we are arrogant. They think, oh, we we show off. It's not that we are arrogant. We are passionate. Yeah. Sometimes when I speak to my wife, she says I'm too loud. I said, you are married to a Nigerian. That's how we speak. Even on phone. <laughs> if it's lie, if, it, if, if I'm telling a lie, when your parents are talking. Oh, yeah, they talk really loud. We talk loud. Like, why are you shouting? <laughs> we, we talk loud. We talk loud. Mm. It's not that we are angry. We are passionate. Yeah, no, 100%. We are passionate about I, what we I do. I get what you mean. You know? Yeah. You know? So that's just... That's just I always say it comes both ways. Mm. The younger generations, the Gen Zs, they need to learn s- stuffs from the old generation because of experience. Yeah. Because if I've gone through a path, I should be the one able to tell you what is actually in that path. Mm. I can tell you, be the maybe you are coming behind me. There's a ditch. Mm. When you get to the to- when you can't get to the left turn or the right turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> as you go through that path, you as an older generation, don't forget that maybe there might be rainfall. Mm. Don't forget that there might be things that have changed the way the path looks like yeah. when you when you 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 went through it. Yeah. So if a Gen Z is telling the father, it's not the way you look at it anymore. It doesn't work like that anyway. You should listen and ask, uh, what what has changed? What has changed? Mm. But then they, they don't But I said no, it has not changed. I know. I know. I passed there. It, that's the oh. way it is. That's ask questions. Why do you think that path has changed? Mm. And let the person tell you, oh, when you left, it was dry. There was no rainfall. But now, there was a lot of rains and there's grasses everywhere. Mm. Oh, no, shut up. I went through it. There's no yeah, grass. It doesn't true. work that way. Uh, yeah, look, the, that, the, the thing is, yeah, unfortunately, the only way to make them realize sometimes that you need to listen is by making them look stupid. In my opinion, and they'll tell you, and they'll tell that's disrespecting. And <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean like make them look stupid. Like, <laughs> it's like sometimes you know the way they have, you know, the way they can come to us and say that, let me leave him and let him learn, let you leave them and let them learn because eventually it's just going to be like, okay, anyway, how do I make sure this doesn't happen again? The only way to make them listen is just to tell them that because me, I'm no longer, I'm not a young generation, too, I'm not a Gen yeah. Z. I'm old. 
I'm not a Gen Z. I'm like in between. You understand? I'm in between. But I'm someone that is very open to learn. Yeah. I always want to learn. But some old people, they don't want to learn. Most especially when it's going to be the Gen Z generation that is teaching them. Yeah. They feel, no, you have no moral right or moral justification to, 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 to lecture me because I'm older than you. Yeah. Life doesn't work that way. Most of the people that lectured me in my master's degree, I'm older than them. True. So will I stand up and tell them, fuck off, you are too young to tell me what business is all about? Yeah. Demography, demography has changed. That's very true. The way business are done has changed. Mm. You know? Things have changed. It has gone past the 1920s. Yeah. No. Back in the days, back in the days, if you tell your dad, in the... Let's say in 1990, yeah. you tell your dad, Dad, I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> your dad will not only disown you, he will kick the shite out of you. <laughs> you want to be a YouTuber? Mm. For, what? They will strangle you. But today, YouTubers are millionaires. They are rich. Yeah. You tell your dad back, do you know I'm not a footballer today? I'm a good footballer. Everybody knows me. Back in the days, oh, dad, I love to play football. You cannot play football. You should go to school. You yeah. must go to school. It's their way or no way. And if you don't answer them, and if you disrespect. don't, that's oh. disrespect. Oh, that's how I stopped playing football mm. and went to school. I've told you times I have friends playing football in France. Endurance is playing in France. Paul is playing in, playing in Spain. Yeah. Abraham is playing in Sweden. These are people that are. Good footballers now making money, even though they are not popular. Mm. But even as a footballer, if you are if you are earning if you are earning ten thousand pounds a week, it's still better than anything. I'm I'm not talking about earning two hundred thousand pounds no, like the Ronaldo's and the mm. likes. I'm talking about you are not known. You are earning ten thousand pounds a week. That's fucked. That's almost salary. In after tax, after tax. Now, tell me the, the that manager that just came back from bank. That's a manager of any of these banks that earns more than mm. up to that. Is there any manager in any of these banks? Manager, I'm talking of manager, just maybe a junior manager was, that earns 40, 40, 40 grand a week after tax. A week? No way. That's probably the year, some of the yearly salaries. Then now, so you see what's happening because the old generation never foresee. Mm. And they will now tell me that what a parent's. It's, That's so true. It's sit down and see. A child that is standing up on a tree cannot, cannot see, see it. <laughs> but they cannot foresee that there be a time that YouTubers will start making money. You know, their football will start making money. That's why you got it. You know, I'm not saying all white people because there is some white people that are out there. But you have to give white people props when it comes to like when their kids want to do something. Just go try it and see. That's like if, it, if it works, it doesn't work. You can always yeah, go back. that's it. That's it. You see what it is? I love them. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to school. You let you see. <clears throat> the best way to learn. Mm. It's from your mistake. Yeah. That's because true. they said, it's the other generation that says it. Mm. Experience is the, is the best, best teacher. teacher. As long as this person is not saying, I want to go and start robbing a bank. I want to go start kidnapping people. Mm. This person says, I want to be a footballer. Is that your passion? Is that what? All they want is, oh, you have to be a respected person in the community. Mm. It's not about pleasing. Let me. T let they think about pleasing others. There's two things I want to say. Respect is not going to pay the bills. <laughs> and respect comes with sense, not culture. Have you ever walked to Lidu and after shopping, they said your money is 51 euro, 20 cent. And you say, I'm respected in my community. Um, yeah, that, and they say, <laughs> okay. you can go. <laughs> you will be going into the Gadi station. That's oh. where they, you'll be going into. Don't mind them. You know, see, you see, we just have to compromise. I'm not saying, I'm just saying we should meet in the middle. Mm. Meet in the middle yeah the older generation needs the younger generation the younger generation need the older generation because of experience mm. you understand yeah no 100 percent. you understand then the younger generation needs to the, the older generation need the younger generation because of development mm. of the way the society is now they they, they, they say the, the younger generation they are careless mm. oh they make decisions carelessly but do you know what statistics says? It said the younger generation saves money 
more than the older generation. You can Google it. Yeah, that, it. I agree with that 100%. I understand. So, you are telling me I'm careless, but I save more money than you. Mm. So, who is more careless when it comes to money? That's true. All, I, all I'm trying to say is that the two generations or the four or five, we have about four or five generations, mm. you should meet in the middle. You should learn to compromise. Yeah. Daddy should learn to listen to kids. Yeah. Kids should learn to listen to daddy. And they come together and compromise and come up with ideas that we with favor the opinion of any of them. And that and that's funny because that comes to one, uh, don't know what someone else says, so that's funny. So another guy said, the older generation are arrogant when it comes to respect. They talk about respect, but they don't practice what they preach. Do you agree or disagree? I've, I've said that before. Yeah. So that, that's what I said. For me, for me, the older generation now, they feel they are entitled to respect. Mm. But they are the ones that say respect is a give and take situation. Mm. The word they use, respect, mm. is reciprocal, right? Yeah. That means if you give me, I give, I give you. you. Yeah. I give you, you give me. So nobody is entitled. Nobody owns respect. I feel like their entitlement comes from when they were kids because it's probably what they all seen around them. Yeah, it's, I think it's from some, and I think it's hard for them to change because it's like, this is not what what I, we what I I had to go through this, yeah, so you have to go through it too. In other words, they are not willing to grow. Yeah. Anybody that wants to stay in one same circle, that doesn't want mm. to learn, then you don't want to. And, grow. Let me, and you know what the crazy thing is. The minority, I'm not even gonna say majority, the minority that were willing to learn and grow. Look at their kids now. Yeah. Like someone like I always use one great example, KSI. What are you not saying? Is you, it on KSI? You, you know KSI. Yeah, I know KSI exactly. now. Do you the, what about um what's the other guy speed or so? I show speed. I show, you see them. K- Kai, the, you, you see? See, see the fact you even know about speed what is saying? crazy. For me, that doesn't give a fuck about the internet. Yeah. Me, I'm a I'm an older generation person. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about internet. I don't care about what is happening there. Yeah. I'm not conversant with, oh, you have to do this on the net and stuff like that. Mm. You know? But there are things that I look at and I use that to look at what is happening around me. Mm. So can can playing games make people a millionaire? Look who taught, you know, when I, when you know? I, KSI's story always gets me because whenever you hear his parents talk, it's like they just were like, you know what? They actually just said for them. And I, you know, I say that moment in their lives, not probably said, let's give this boy a chance and see what he does. Did you ever hear the story about one day? I don't know if this is a true story or not. Yeah. Apparently, he went, so we on KSI, did you know about KSI when he started? No. Okay. So when KSI started, I was probably, KSI started probably 15, 16 years old, making money on YouTube. Apparently, this guy was making like 8,000 euro, 8,000 pounds a month. Apparently, went to the school one day. They asked him what does he want. Apparently, I don't know if you got an argument with a teacher or how the conversation is, but whatever conversation is, the teacher has pissed him off. And the teacher said, I make more than you in a month. And what what you what you make, no, say what you make in your salary in a month, I make that three times, basically. Make eight thousand. Why? Because I believe his parents were like, This guy is actually getting somewhere. His name is actually getting out there. So I feel like the minority that understand that like respect is earned, not his hand. Wait, 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 sorry. To understand respect is earned and comes with sense, not culture. Mm-hmm. Are the ones that are seeing the fruits of the labor of like, okay, let me give this kid a chance. I totally agree. You know? I totally so that's when agree. you know, and it does come down to us black do us black people overdo respect when it comes to especially older people, like our elders. And one thing I want to actually ask you about is you're not Yoruba, but what do you think about prostrating? It's other people's culture. Mm. It's not my culture. Mm. But if I'm greeting an elderly person, mm. I still bow down. I, I was thinking about it the other day. I still yeah. do it, but in my head, it's like, why am I bowing down to you when you're like, you're not God? I feel yeah. like, because in my opinion, the only person I bow down to it's, and when I pray is God. God. So are you in? Are you kind of saying that you are a God over me? No, you see, you see, there are some stuff when it comes to, when it comes to culture thing. Mm. I don't like going into that because yeah. I don't want to trample on people's culture. Yeah. If 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 they if if they if they love doing it, it's fine. If yeah. it doesn't cause any harm, if it doesn't cause any disrespect for anybody, yeah. both parties, I said then, that's okay. Mm. Me, my kid will not come and bow down to me. Don't why are you bowing down yeah, to yeah, me? Yeah, my kids will I'm my not, kid um... will wake up and shake my hands and say, Hi dad. Mm. 
That's it. That's I will even love my kids to help me. I, Baba Jeru. <laughs> It, it makes me feel nah, more happy. 100% that I, I agree with oh, you man, on that. Come, I, see, I want to live in an environment that is kind of informal yeah. when it comes to my house. You know? Like, that doesn't show. You see, in my family, mm. I told you, I'm the baby of the family. Yeah. We are 10. We insult, we take banter, we have a peace at each other, we crack. But the moment the one that is older than me changes the mood yeah. on his face, I know the message is passing. hundred percent. It's like he's telling me, "Be careful. <laughs> you, be careful. Don't go there." Then I know when to step on my brake because he said, "Even a crazy man, even someone that is crazy eating from the dump, mm. he or she knows when to cross the rail railroad." No, oh, yeah, I agree. You you cannot say a madman doesn't know how to cross the railroad. You are mad. It doesn't it doesn't concern some things in life. Mm. So in as much as we live in an informal environment, me and my family, mm. we still know when to respect each yeah, other. No, That's what I say. It's about meeting in the middle. Fine, Yoruba people's culture, they buy on the floor, they like, oh, it's their culture. Fair like, like I'm Yoruba. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I'm saying it. Because yeah, I, I get it. I, I, look, I, still, yeah. I don't do it as much anymore. But obviously, it's my granny or like yeah. people older than me. I won't do it fully, but I'll still do it. But I just... I'm not saying in a bad way or good way. I just yeah. never understood. I it. do it. I bow to yeah. till today. Because I'm not your boss, so I don't post yeah, yeah, yeah. But I bow if I'm shaking and I'm shaking with my both hands. Mm. Someone that is older than me. I don't shake like this. I go like this. Mm. It's like something it's it's done. How would I say it? It's, it's just it's it's just done. I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's just something yeah. that's in me. You no, know, I grew up in that kind of environment. No, that, again, that there it is. It's about the environment to grow up in as well. Because obviously, like, obviously, I was, when I was born, I feel like everybody born after, like, 2003, 2004 yeah. will not understand, like, everybody, not everybody, yeah. but will not understand, like, people who were born between 1997 to 2000. Yeah. Because, again, very strong African household. The saying that my household was... I don't care what you're doing outside, but when you're in my household, you're in the four corners of Nigeria. Yeah, that's <laughs> that was that. it. Yeah, that's. But um, I feel like respect is something that everybody should get: old, young, black, Sabo. white, gray, wherever you're from. You are totally correct, my brother. I don't think I think yeah, the totally way cool. we, as black people, or like Nigerians, because apparently it's not not even like as Nigerian project culture protect respect is a bit too much it's like if you don't respect me you're disrespecting me and in some cases people get scolded people get being like there's even the situation like i'm going to say this one very very this one was one that annoyed me one day so obviously i don't really want to go into it too much but i was with somebody and because she is someone who's close to me they expected her to be doing for example helping cook and do stuff because basically and that's the thing that's my girlfriend so she should be helping everybody in the party out and all this and doing all these things and in my head i'm like you barely know the girl and you're asking her to be doing this doing that helping. i told my mom i said mom sort this out because i don't want to make a scene my mom's my, my, and fair play you know the thing is i respect my mom my mom is one of them people who are learning she's understanding like you know she's open she's, she's open. open and i said to her she goes who is and she goes who is telling her to do that went to the person they left her alone i'm just like i don't i like i get asking someone for help but expecting someone to help you, you because you see what you say, you see what you've just mm. said is uh it's an experience that i have been through mm. been through. you know when you are a baby of the family mm. They expect you to do oh it's, it's the baby of the family mm. he has to be this he has to be that but because i'm the baby of the family i'm loved by my mother and my father mm. oh no jerry will not do that mm. my my mom came to visit me here in ireland and she wants to go and wash my clothes <laughs> oh are you, you go to wash clothes oh God, let me help you i said uh, uh, go and sit down <laughs> <laughs> i just want to put them in the washing wash, machine I, are you sure you're okay? Okay, when you put them, I'll dry them for you. Mm. Mom, forget. I'm no longer 
Yeah. Oh, baby, that's baby you see. True. Even like little things like when I was cooking. I'm um, a man. Yeah. Now, try to the moment you get the, the the sooner you get that into your skull, the better for both of us. <laughs> Don't come here and start. Yeah, no. Don't come here and start hundred percent. You know that, but, but that's how I grew up. Yeah. So now, when you bring your girlfriend home, they say to validate her. In the Nigerian culture, it's for her to be like the slave running up and down. No, not, she not. should wash plates, wash this, run up and down. This. Uh, that's not happening. I'm so. I, I told them. I read. Like, I read. <laughs> I don't know if I need to make very clear to them. And you, you know, funny thing about them, mm. if a l- girl can pretend to do all that, oh, she's a good girl. Mm. Have they checked the other aspect of what the girl does? Oh, because she washes dishes for you. That makes her a better person. And now all they think is what she did for them, mm. not, not what, what she she's doing for, for me. Yeah. So even if she breaks your heart, you catch her sleeping with another man and you go and tell this your family. Say, oh, oh I catch so so and so sleep with her. They say, Oh, oh that good, good girl. girl. But that girl that is, is good now. You know, that's forgive so true. her. Forgive her. Or do you know what it was? If she can if they could like for example, yesterday it was funny. I talked to someone on the phone and I was just and I was cooking. Yeah. I was just like, Why are you cooking? Is your girlfriend not gonna cook? And I was just like, I kinda said to them, like, oh guys, come on, can we just get away from this? That's like I get it. There's certain aspects and certain traits your family want to see in someone that you're married. Obviously, yeah. I, let's like let's call it spade a spade. There's certain things that I get it. Like obviously, if it's like, why are you always cooking? Why are you always doing these things? Isn't there someone there to help you? I get it. But there's times it's just like I just want to cook for myself. Like, Let me tell you how things. You see how things. How things. It, evolve without mm. our old people knowing about it back in the days the men mm. they go to farm they go mm. to work and the women stay at home to prepare the stuff mm. that the men that have gone for hours brought back for them to prepare yeah some people are forgetting that women go to work too mm-hmm. and they are humans just like you yeah if you work eight hours your wife too is working eight hours. Mm-hmm. So why do you expect her to be solely the one preparing food? It's supposed to be a 50-50 thing. I've said it before. You know, let me even correct myself. It's not even supposed to be a 50-50 thing. I've said it before on this podcast and I'll say it again. Whoever has the strength mm. to do it, whoever has the will, whoever has the hunger to do it, do it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> if I wake up and I feel strong, I, I go down, prepare food for mm-hmm. me and my wife. It doesn't take anything out of my body. It doesn't make me a lesser man. It doesn't make my wife disrespect me. Yeah. But it makes my wife respect me more. Yeah. Imagine my wife she, telling her friends that the house can never be dirty if I go to work and Jerry's working at night. Because before I come back from work, Jerry would have cleaned the house for me. Mm. And it's vice versa. That's very true. I think they they don't understand vice versa because that's not the way they were brought up. It's the, things have changed. These women now goes to work. Some women even work harder mm-hmm. than some men. Yeah. I'm saying <clears throat> some women. Yeah. Work harder than some men because some women are the breadwinner of the family. Yeah. And after a breadwinner has gone to battle and win bread and bring home. You still expect that bread winner to that battle and want the bread and bring home to come and still make dinner for you. Yeah. To take care of the kids, to do the assignment for the kids, to bat the kids. So, you know, it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. It's it's a two-way thing, you know. It's it's you, you. Let's meet in the middle. Yeah. So for me, that's it. And um Do you believe in this? What they said, they said this last thing, and this is where we'll finish off. Yeah. They said Gen Z don't understand the importance of respect. That so, do Gen so the question there was do Gen Z understand respect is something that is a cultural aspect, and that respecting your elders is just part of your culture? And I or do Gen Z no, I Gen Z not understanding respect, respect is respect, and that is it. 
Respect is not respect, and that's mm. not it. Mm -hmm. I disagree. I I hate people. You just laws are, laws are changed. Mm. Laws even laws get changed. Laws get changed <laughs> yeah. with you know with development, with circumstances, mm. with time. Laws are changed. Mm. There are laws that they put down, and after some time they say, "Oh no, well, I think uh, we should." Be considerate about some stuff. Yeah. You know, I think let's make a little tweak on these laws and come up with laws that can favor every one of us. You know? So, if you feel you are entitled to respect, that gives you the right to talk down on someone that is that's younger than you the way you deem please. Mm. And you expect that person to see accept and still bow down to you. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Life has gone past that way. Life has gone... It's Life has used Ferrari to run past that, <laughs> that face. Mm. You know? I will say it and I will say it very clearly. I love respect. I love giving respect. I cannot be in the bus and I see an elderly woman, an elderly woman standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely stand yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. That is respect. Yeah, 100%. But if I'm sitting down, and I did not see that old person standing up. And the person comes to me and say, can't you see me standing up? Can't you I'm not standing stand up. I will, I will say, fuck off. Yeah, I'm not standing up. Fuck off. Yeah. Like, in my heart personally, like, it does the same thing. If I see somebody standing or I see someone, it doesn't yeah. need boss. If I see someone genuinely need help, I'm yeah. going to help them. Yeah, but yeah. And not because I'm disrespecting them. Not because of anything to do with I'm just going to help them. Because yeah, that's the way I am. Because that's moral right. That's the moral right thing to yeah. do. Yeah. It's just it's just morals. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more right for you to look at an older person, at a disabled person, at uh, a pregnant person. I was genuinely helped them. You know, standing and mm. you know, it's right for, it's only right for you mm. as a genuine citizen as as someone with morals to say, ah, have a seat. Yeah. Except if the person declines, that I'm fine. That, that, that's okay. Oh yeah. Well, I, 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 I honestly But if agree. I don't see you, I'm just on sitting on the bus and maybe pressing my phone and one elderly person comes and say, stand up. Yeah. I will say, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. <clears throat> you have no right to tell me to stand up. No, 100%. You that the bus that you entered is even free of charge. <laughs> You get what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So you have no right to just come and tap nah, anybody yeah. because it's a young boy, it's a young girl. They no, should stand up for you because no, you're old. Do. It does work like that. I will always say it, and I'll say it. Respect. You can't buy respect from Lidl. You can't buy respect from Super Valley. Okay, it has to be earned. It has to be earned. Yeah. Like I, in the, in the, no, the the one part I say is there's a certain level of respect you have to give your mother and your father. That's just I believe yeah. that. But yeah. again, there's a certain level of respect that everybody sh should get but again like you said as you said it is earned it is not just because i'm just because i'm your elder that means you should respect should. it's that it's that i hate that because i am your I elder owe you, I owe you, you should respect me i owe you nothing i came to this world i, I owe you nothing the only person that owe that i only the only person i owe is people that have made my life better <laughs> only person i owe it that much better my, is god my parents, <laughs> you see you see i will respect you yeah if you deserve to be respected. Yeah, 100%. I'm not, and the same thing is like, just because you're older, and if I know you're a bad person, I don't care. And if you bring shite to my face, oh. one criminal, one dirty stealing politician, and that say because he's older than me, I, I will hmm. say, go fuck yourself. Let your children that you are stealing from, that you are stealing money and giving to, let them start respecting you. I do mm. not, I do not, support i will never support anybody that thinks that respect is an entitlement mm. it's not an entitlement it will never be an entitlement my own opinion though yeah. you have to work to earn respect 100%. you have to show me why must i respect you and you have to give me respect back in return irrespective of my age my color my height my gender it's none of your business mm. yeah so that's just that's just it yeah guys so but, uh, Sorry to cut you short, but I still feel younger generation show some respect. Mm. You know, when I mean show some respect, when moms say, come on by 10 o'clock, 
Come on by come 12 o'clock. Yeah. Just come on by 12 o'clock. Mm. That's, you know? That's what I say. Yeah. Like, you should always, like, yeah. there should be a certain level of respect yeah. your parents respect. get compared because, to everybody else. Because me and you know, if your parents say, come on by 12 o'clock, we all know what's happening out there. Yeah. It's rough at night. So if your parents say, come, it's because they care. Yeah. You know, it's because they care. They want to see that you are safe. Mm -hmm. But if your parents say, oh, you cannot be a footballer, you cannot be a YouTuber, you must be a doctor. Then you can tell them, see, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be a doctor. Because I can be a doctor because of you. At the end, I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. I, I go and kill someone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm not. If you are not enjoying what you are doing, you don't put, you are not committed to it. You can make blunders. You can make mistakes. Uh -huh. And being the, and the thing is, you know, let's go, f f the thing is, even like that, it's the thing with medicine. I never understood it. I know we're going off on a tangent. It's like, be a doctor, be a doctor. Do your parents, do my parents not understand sometimes? Like, you're telling me to put someone else's life right. in my hands and because if i mess up yeah i'm gonna lose my license yeah. i'm never gonna be able to be a doctor again yeah, funny enough it's at the detriment of their own joy yeah. the detriment of their own mm. bragging my son is like you see sorry to cut you, off. you see many young people now they are depressed committing suicide mm. because they are not given an opportunity to express themselves mm. they are not given opportunity they, they have not been listened to <laughs> So you, the parents that should listen to your kids, you are you are asking for respect mm. instead of you to listen, listen to what they are trying to say, mm. listen. Yeah. Oh no! If you are not this, you cannot mm. live in my house. Yeah. Oh no! If you are not this, go. And that is causing a lot of depression. And you know what's so funny, is that the jobs that, like, say for example, being a doctor, those jobs, some being a doctor can only pay so much. Like there's just jobs out there with computers that will pay six or seven times what the doctors getting paid. They say work at they work, they say work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Do you want me to stand and be doing surgery for twenty four mm. hours? You know some doctors there are some surgery they stand for twenty four hours trying to save someone's life while the money that they are paid in a year, a gamer mm. or a YouTuber is getting it or a footballer <laughs> is getting it or a week. basketball superstar I guess it just like to that. be doing to be doing the things like doctors and. It's supposed thing. to be a passion. You have, you have to have a passion. You have to have a passion for that. Save, you have to, have to passion save people's to save lives. lives. That's what's your passion. If you carry someone like me that is temperamental to go and be a doctor, <laughs> if I say put your leg this way, you put it the other way. I can sound, <laughs> I can sound you. Sound even though I'm doing surgery for you. I can sound you and say put your leg this way because I'm a temperamental person. It's not yeah. something good, which I'm trying to correct. No, hundred percent. So I cannot wake up one day and say I want to be a doctor. I will just kick the shite out of my patient if you tell me shite. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, mm. so, but, but that, that, that's by the way. Yeah. So me, I, I, I see, I always, I don't want to work in any establishment that I'm supposed to be meeting customers one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> because I know there are crazy people out there. Yeah, trust me, people that work in retail know. And, and, and <laughs> in as much as they are crazy, me to me, I'm mad. <laughs> so for peace to reign, for me not to get fired. I prefer working in the back. Yeah, no, I hear you. Where I, I only have conversations with my work colleagues. My workers, my colleagues. Yeah. Because I work with them 24 hours, day, night. I know them. I know I know each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. But the millions of people that work to a retail store, or thousands of people, you, you see different characters. Yeah. I'm not that kind of a patient person. You know? Totally. So I know that. So I chose my path. And thank God for that. Mm. Just to avoid problem. No, I understand. I hear you. But so, like, yeah. Well, that's it. <sighs> I'm, my, my, my last piece I just want to say is yeah. to parents, to anybody out there, remember, respect is earned, not a, not something that you are, not, it's not a demand, it's not a law. Yeah. And also on the last piece, please always remember, like we just said there in the last piece, listen to your kids. Yeah, Lair them out. Lair Don't them. let your own yeah don't let your own dreams and aspirations be their dreams and aspirations because at the end of the day we have to remember we're living in a world that is changing every day faster. faster the world has probably changed so quickly that even them themselves are realizing what they're, they're like what is going they on they can't even catch up they with can't the pace. even catch up they can't catch up so with the pace. just always remember yes i agree with parts of what those guys were saying respect to a certain degree your parents should get but that is your parents because they are the ones again and let me just put it out there let me actually retract what i'm going to say 
respect should only be given to parents who are actually taking good care of you. Yes. Yeah, so not just parents that are just treating you anyhow. Sure, it's on respect, respect. But like I said, respect is not is respect is not an entitlement. It is earned. It's and on that note, guys, we will see you next we will see you next time yeah guys and we hope you enjoyed this episode and i know there may be aunties and uncles see the way i still respect you and call these aunties and uncles out there who may comment on this and disagree and on that have note podcast we will talk to you later talk to you later have a good day take care peace out guys peace out and peace remember guys. comment hate love whatever you want to comment we love it and take care. Bye bye. We have thick skins. We don't give a fuck about it. Yeah, <laughs> have you seen them? I just, yeah. Wait, did you see them on the <laughs> I never knew that we could piss them off. Our so much. skin is so thick <laughs> that we don't give a fuck about your negative comments. You know why? Because those negative comments, it keeps us going. And we take the positive things. You don't throw the baby and the dirty water. You take out the baby and throw away the, the dirty, dirty water. water. So that's your negative comment. We use it to better ourselves more. And you're yeah? so funny, but you know, before we leave, you're also funny about this. Is I actually have to clap for some of them because they're really going in. <laughs> they're really trying. But anyway, guys, thank you and enjoy. Hey, so